If you are an agency owner, this video right here is going to save you tons of time when it comes to getting set up on my favorite tool, Asana. This is the exact flow that we use across tons of different agencies and hundreds of clients to get set up using Asana for free. So make sure you keep watching. Hi, I'm Taylor, a client account manager for digital marketing agencies. A few years ago, I left building my marketing agency to zero in on what I did best, which was keeping clients happy. Now, my team and I at Dot & Company are the world's first and only dedicated team of client account managers for digital marketing agencies. Now, we partner with tons of marketing agencies all around the world to make their agencies run smoother with a client-facing account manager that's been perfectly vetted, trained, and managed by us at Dot. On this channel, I'm going to give you a little bit of wisdom into the exact systems, trainings, templates that we use every day to support seven-figure agency owners every day as their client account managers. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos and cheers to happy clients. Okay, let's get started. So I am inviting you in to see inside of our exact Asana program internally at Dot & Company. So we're using this with the purpose of having a free account. So if you're just getting started, you're using a free account, that's absolutely perfect. There's lots that we can do inside of a free account and that's what we're gonna get started with. If you have the premium account and you've upgraded to a business account, that will be included more so in the upgraded uh, advanced tax to Asana, but let's get started in the free version. Okay, so first we're going to get set up and we're going to create teams. So you'll see on the left here, you have favorites, reports, teams, and other teams. So you're gonna open up teams. Now you'll see we have a number already, but you're just gonna click add team. So I would start here by creating one called templates. Inside of every single team, a team is kind of like a house. So you may have certain teams that are for certain members of your team. Maybe it's just media buying. Maybe it's just marketing, it's sales, it's templates. So certain people can be added into here. The templates is our team, which is our house. Then inside we're gonna create different projects or different templates for different things. So let's get started by clicking on new project. And then you're going to choose import a spreadsheet. Call it client onboarding and select file to import. Now this is where you're going to drag and drop the file that is in this module called the onboarding template. You're going to upload this right in. So it'll take a few minutes to populate, but once it's done, we're going to customize it for your agency. Okay, so everything has been input. I'm gonna close this here and let's get started by customizing it. So this uh, onboarding template is generally for Facebook ads clients. So let's rename it to that. Now, the point of having this onboarding checklist is so that you, inside of your agency, you can continue to tweak it and change it as you onboard clients. This is a shell that you can get started with, but this will absolutely change for you once you start to learn. The most important part is that you, either the agency owner or if you're a client-facing account manager, if this is your role to optimize this process, make it top of mind that anytime you have a learning, you're editing this template. So for example, I work with a YouTube ads agency where we are onboarding a number of clients every week. Over the last two years, we have edited and changed this onboarding template all of the time. And that is normal. As you're learning things and optimizing things, you're gonna be changing it. So let's dig in and customize this for you. So we have different stages and in Asana, you can actually toggle these so that they drop down and they're just nice and clean. If you want it to always look like this, you can click here, save layout is default. Now let's look at each stage. So we have the pre-work. The pre-work is essentially what happens before the client has absolutely said yes to coming on board. So maybe this is where the salesperson has the sales call. So what you'll do is say whatever your process looks like in your agency. Say you have someone book a call and then the agency owner is going to come in and create a template inside of the sales board for each client. Maybe it's this one. So they're going to create this and they're going to assign out the tasks to certain people. So maybe the salesperson is Carly. So I'm going to assign certain things to Carly, but Katie is the one who decides who's going to be working on every account. 
inside each task, you can have certain notes that are customized to your agency. So say there's certain notes for certain people. Uh, maybe it is, hey, um, hey Carly, make sure, um, make sure to tag Katie in this task when the sales call is completed. Sales team. So you can customize this and if you do this in the template, these notes will carry over. You can also add certain collaborators. So say I wanna know as the CEO, when the sales call is completed, I'll want to make sure that I'm tagged in it. So anything, any action that happens on here, say it's checked off, if there's notes added, I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting notified inside of my Asana. So then what you'll do is you'll go through each of these tasks and customize it. So assign media buyer, notes. So here you can have different bullets, for example, so what, why, how, associated materials, and when to market complete. Just having step-by-step -step items that have to be done so that you can add any team member in here to get trained up on your process. So as these things are completed, they'll be checked off by just checking here. And due dates can be assigned and so on and so forth. So this is the pre-work. The client hasn't yet said yes for sure, but this is kind of what's happening before they sign on the dotted line. Stage one is contracts and invoice. I find this really important to have in your onboarding system because it can sometimes be something that gets forgotten. Sometimes you say, oh my goodness, they said yes, that's amazing, and then you start onboarding them. But really, your process should have them paid first, sign the contract first. So as long as it's in your process, you'll make sure that it's getting done, and if you've delegated this to someone on your team, even better. Client onboarding, so this happens once the client says yes, they've paid their invoice, they've signed the contract. You're going to get the client onboarding briefing document together, send their intro email to um, the client, introducing their client account manager, send a handwritten card, we have a template in here for you, set up the client folder in Google Drive, and of course this whole process is customizable for you. This is just an overview that we've put together. The project scope looks a little lean right now, but this is something that is going to change from client to client or agency to agency. So it really depends on what service you're offering and what the scope of the project looks like, like you customize that. Launch, first 30 days. So we have you know one week update to the client, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, um, and then just some standard things that you'll wanna make sure are completed. Inside these updates, you'll see we have different information for e-com, lead gen, coaches, YouTube, and that kind of thing. So take a look there and customize that for you. And then we have a section called happy clients. Of course, happy clients are a priority. So it's really important to have these items in your onboarding system and dates assigned and people assigned so that you're getting testimonials from your clients, case studies prepared, and ensuring that your clients are happy and they're going to continue to sign for another three months. Then you can have certain you know, materials down here. Inside of this project, you can also, once you've copied it, like this is a template right now, but once you've copied it and it's customized for every client, what you can have is on the overview tab, you can have further details. So you can add a, a brief, you can add um, about this client, you can have you know, who's the key contact, what's their email, um, what's their phone number, or whatever you need to know. And then things like, on track or not, you can add progress reports. So say for example, um, sales call was completed. You may have your entire sales call notes here, attached call recording, and tag someone. Right? So this is a really good feature. We use these on our weekly update calls as a team. So I go through and kind of do this overall status update, make sure any tasks are up to date and just kind of keeping things organized. You can also see this in a board format. If you're used to using Trello, this will look really familiar to you, but essentially the list and the board are the exact same thing. If you change something on the board, it's also changing on the list. It's just a different view that you can toggle on. Timeline is a paid upgraded version, so we'll talk about that in the next section. And calendar is a really great way to see due dates that are kind of on a calendar format. 
Dashboard, again, is a paid feature, but you can see things like all of the incompleted tasks and you can change it to completed and incompleted, but we'll get into this in the next section. And one of my favorite things is that you can have messages right inside of every project. So if you have one master project for each of your 10 clients, you can try and keep your conversations in here so that they're A, searchable, B, transparent for the whole team, and everything's in one place. You can also set up your domain so that you can forward emails to a certain project. So say you have you know, a sales project that you're using a lot, and so anytime a new lead emails you, you could forward the email over to this URL and it'll pop right in here in messages. Forms, again, is a paid version, so we'll get into that later and files. So you can't upload files into this section, but if you upload files into the messages, they're going to be stored here under files. Over here, you'll see share. So you can add certain people into the project or you can invite by just copying this link. You can also make them private, but I believe you need the paid version. Yeah, you do. So how this works is if the team is only assigned to you and one other team member, you two are the only ones who can see each of the projects in that team. If you have your entire team in a team and then you have individual projects, all the people who are in that team can see it if you're in the free version. Just a good thing to know. Another hack is under each task, you can create subtasks. So you can create different things and you can assign them to different people with different due dates. So that's really great. And then inside you can actually have descriptions and comments as to these specific subtasks. You can attach a file right there. You can like it. So a lot of our team will, it's more of like an acknowledgement um, and you can grab the actual link to the task. So you just click on that. It copies it to your, to your clipboard and you can just drop it in an email into Slack into whatever software is you're using. And then there's a, a bunch of other things that we can do that we're gonna get into. But for example, you can add this to another project. So say you have a dashboard that you want certain tasks to go to, or if you want this to be a milestone and you have the paid version. So there you go, you have a template set up. And if you have the paid version, you can convert to a template. But honestly, if you just have this free version, it's perfectly fine because you have templates. And what you'll do is as soon as you're bringing on a new client, you'll click here, duplicate client, duplicate project, sorry. Um, I always check these off, create new project, and then that will give you its own unique project for here. And then you can drag it into whatever team is necessary that you've created. And then you can also hit the star button to add it to your favorites. Let me ask you, is a project management software like Asana going to save you tons of time and headaches and make your agency run smoother? If so, comment Asana in the comments below. So now is the time to test your knowledge. And if you're the one who's going to be running the show and creating these templates, this is gonna be super helpful for you. And if you're gonna be doing this on behalf of the agency owner or someone else that you're working with, it's time to show off all the things that you've learned inside of the Asana Lab. So make sure you follow each of the instructions and make sure that you get this right. Make sure that if there's anything that feels off for your agency, customize this before you show it off to the rest of your team. If there's a task in here that you won't use or there's tasks that are missing, definitely update it and then show off all your skills by creating a really awesome Loom video for someone on your team. Again, if you have any questions, please let us know. Well, there you have it. If you are serious about nailing your client onboarding, you can just grab the exact checklist that we use across tons of different agencies by going to dotandcompany.co slash checklist or using the link below. And of course, we wanna help you as an agency owner to scale up and make your agency run smoother. So reach out with any questions. And until next time, cheers to happy clients.